Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Allergy Smart TV. I'm your host, Aaron Dwyer. Well, I have something in the pipeline this week that I'm very much looking forward to. I have uh, pre-arranged an interview with Linda Koss, who I mentioned on last week's show. She's the author of uh, two current books that are out there now on food allergies. Uh, one is a, uh, a food allergy um, a general type of book and the other is a food allergy cookbook. So I'm very much looking forward to interviewing her and we're teeing up a time this week. So hopefully I'll be able to bring that to you on next week's show. I also have another topic that I also wanted to talk about and that was related to what dads do in regards to food allergies. How much interaction and influence do dads have and how much do they actually take on board and involve themselves with the food allergies around the house. I know a lot of uh, mums do a fair amount of the work but I would be very interested to know how much fathers and dads actually put into it. So I've actually put a, a post on, on uh, one of the, uh, the, the uh, Kids with Food Allergies uh, forum and it's, it's uh, sparked a bit of conversation happening there. So hopefully I'll get to talk about that in a couple of weeks time. Um, what I do want to talk about today, apart from those two things, is food labelling and the amount of vigilance that you have to do with regards to your food allergies and anaphylaxis and food labelling. So I want to use an example to show you this and an exa a personal example is the best type of example. So um, Declan, our son, he is uh, coming on to eight years old. He has uh, um, his highest allergy at the moment is with dairy and we used to get many years ago we got a packet of redskins now I don't know if you have these sort of lollies uh, or candy as you might call it in the US if you have this sort of stuff uh, around in your area but these are just uh, a hard red lolly basically they used to always contain milk solids and and of course we could never have them then all of a sudden just in the last or oh, probably in the last eight months the uh, the ingredients have shown that there is no milk solids in there at all now this is to highlight a fact to you that companies do change their ingredients and you want to always check the ingredients whenever you go shopping. Now for most of the people who are listening to this uh, good chance is, is that you're already on top of this and understand that ingredients do change uh, manufacturers do change their ingredients over time so it's a case of whenever you go shopping the shopping excursion takes 10 times longer than what it would if you didn't have to check the labels of everything so um, but that's a whole other topic alone is going shopping so Redskins they changed their ingredients they then said on the packaging that there was no milk solids well it just wasn't on the ingredients list and no may contains no nothing so we thought fine great we can try it now and so we, we gave uh, we gave our son a, a red skin and um, that night he, he broke out in hives pretty well half an hour after he half an hour after he'd had and he only had about half of it and felt like he couldn't eat the rest of it uh, so we didn't know what it was so we didn't assume straight away that it was the red skin so what we did then was the next day he wanted another one so we gave him another one he only took one lick of it and that was it he knew in his body he knew that something wasn't quite right and he didn't proceed to eat it sure enough he had hives fairly well straight after that so and that was that was just with with one lick now we don't know if they, there was some contamination in there we don't know if the product if there was still milk proteins in the lolly itself we don't know to what extent it was in the product so we, we don't know a lot of answers to these questions I actually sent an email off to the company that makes the product and as yet I haven't heard anything back and that was about a month and a half ago so uh, I've been incredibly busy so I haven't been able to follow up with it so that's something that I really will do is follow up with this company the other thing that I should have done as uh, um, as, as, a, as a normal general course is to alert others to alert places like uh, FAN in the US and here in Australia, Anaphylaxis Australia, Canada, UK has got their own. So if you notice a product that, has, that, that, you, that you have had an adverse reaction to where there's nothing listed on the label, someone needs to know. And I actually did a bad thing and didn't let AAI know and didn't, and didn't get it out there and got the bums rush from the, from the food manufacturer. So 
really, obviously, there's much more I could have done in this uh, circumstance, and I'm going to learn from my experience here, and I hope that, that you guys would be able to learn from it as well and take it on board. So that's all I wanted to talk about this week is maintain vigilance on your labelling because things do change and even when they do change you've still got to keep your guard up because you just don't know. Oh, I also want to add, uh, please leave your comments uh, just below on, on the blog. Just drop me a comment. Um, very simple and, uh, and I would much appreciate it. Also, if you haven't yet done so, uh, leave your um, contact details over here and sign up to our uh, newsletter to keep you informed and tips and tricks and all sorts of other stuff as well. So that's it for today. See you again next week. Bye for now.